Greetings. This is TK Trav, aka Travis Magus, here with LVX 777. Today I'd like to talk about time. A lot of people are commenting and asking questions in regards to difficulty with providing results with their magic and with their evocation and things like that. I guess, to me, since I've been doing it for so long, I overlook this question a lot. But now I'm starting to see it's probably one of the most asked questions. People who just don't know how to crack into the first step. And I think it has a lot to do with time. But it also has a lot to do with of course, how we approach the art of magic, whether it's evoking spirits or using your mind to produce results in the near or distant future. I think one thing that one thing that really hinders, um, you know, at least us in the U.S., is that we have a preconceived image of what's supposed to happen. Based off of pop culture, we believe like we know what to expect. We expect to see a crazy looking monster come out of the ground in a burst of flame, right? With choirs singing and organ music playing. You know, of course that's extreme. Hopefully nobody really thinks that when they crack open a book and start a ritual. But Scenes like that really impact our subconscious mind. So even though we're not realistically expecting all that, we're expecting that feeling, right? Like something has just happened and, you know, to be in a state of awe, to be entertained, really. The reason I said us over here in the U.S. is because our culture is deeply rooted at this point in entertainment. We can't go a day without our entertainment. So, to have someone else paint the picture for you, how magical results should look, or how magic should be practiced, that really hinders your progress. Because the truth of the matter is, the art of magic is an art and a science, and it's extremely closely related to psychology. Because what you're doing is you're manipulating and controlling your own perspective. And you're taking charge of all the faculties of the mind and using them at your directed purpose. For example, if I do a ritual and I expect a certain result, everything that I've studied and learned tells me that I should only focus on the positive outcome. Now that's not just wishful thinking. That's setting my entire will and attention and focus on the future that exists where I have what I've asked for, as opposed to worrying and doubting, right? And generally not trusting the science of magic. Now aside from that, it also involves daily or weekly or monthly repetitious use of symbols and sounds and sights and smells to gear and focus our mind and our spirit on a specific outcome. And lo and behold, like magic, most of the time we get what it is that we've asked for. Now, if it's something very outlandish, it may take you some time, but for day-to-day -day basic things, they manifest pretty quickly. Fear and doubt definitely are hinders and destroyers of your results. If you don't know what you're doing and you're trying it for the first time, try your best to remove doubt from your perspective. When you boil down everything that I just said, 
you can easily make the argument that this is just hocus pocus. This is just willful positive belief. You know, this is nothing concrete. And you would be right if we were going off of your perspective of a science-based material world. But in all actuality, the world is not material. The world is vibrational. The world exists because an infinite number of frequencies and vibrations have coalesced together to produce all that we see and hear. To simplify that, Quantum physics tells you that when they zoom down into the smallest particle and atom and building block of reality, there's nothing there. It's just a vibration. That's what your quantum physics tells you. And it's a very vague, open, and loose definition. Now, if you come over and you study the Kabbalah, if you study the Kabbalion, you begin to notice that it correlates with that same discovery. Discovery. Because these books and these practices have been here since man has been here, and maybe before man has been here. And it tells you that all of existence is founded and based on vibration. So, working with this magic, what we're doing is we're manipulating vibration to bring us what we want. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing selfish or evil about that. That is simply a person taking control of their own lives and guiding their life into the direction that they'd like to go in. I didn't say anything about horned, fanged monsters with wings, did I? I didn't say anything about going to hell and all this crazy nonsense. Utilizing the spirits around you is a science and an art, and that's what they're there for. They comprise the energy and the vibrations that surround us. When a person passes away, they join that vibration. All these spirits and angels that we have named and given personalities and descriptions to are vibrations. You, watching this video, are a vibration. I am a vibration that has a name. Your thoughts are a stream, right? They call it the thought stream. What, what comprises the stream? It is your vibration. It is the frequency of what you think, what you think about, how often you think it. All these things are a formula that make up the vibration called you. Okay? Now get this. Everything in existence has that same definition. The color purple is a frequency. The sight of a skull is a frequency. What do I mean by that? I mean when any person that exists sees a skull, they feel a certain way right away. Whether it's fear, whether it's confidence, whether it's time to put your game face on because danger's near. Whatever it is, everything is a frequency that you can latch on to, you can use, or you can take out of your life. So when I'm talking about magic and thinking positive and staying on focus, I'm not talking about wishful thinking and hocus pocus. Right? Grabbing a hold of a certain frequency that is defined and bringing it into your life is going to produce results to you. Why? Because that frequency and everything that makes it up intermingles with your own frequency. Now you're essentially using the power of whatever that frequency is be it an angel, or a demon, or an ancestor, or a loa, right? Or, or whatever pantheon we want to go to, a god, a titan, netaru, whatever. They're all frequencies. It's very simple when you look at it like that, okay? Versus looking at it, uh, you know, as a westerner, that there's a separate place called hell, and that's where you go and you'll see demons and torture and fire and flames. Or there's a separate place called heaven. And that's where the angels are and all of your loved ones are and God Almighty is. The concept of a spiritual place, I mean, see that contradicts itself. Because it's not a physical place. It's not a physical concrete place. Neither of those, heaven or hell. They're states of being. 
they are frequency levels that you can exist on. And you don't have to die to go to either one of them. People have heaven on earth, and that's the point of this magic. People have hell on earth because they don't know anything. The Bible says it's for lack of knowledge that my people are destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ignorance leads you to hell. The Gnostics will tell you this salvation isn't just because you have an idea about how you get to heaven. Salvation comes from one accumulating the knowledge of self, the knowledge of his environment, and the, the knowledge of the illusion, right? What we call the simulation. The knowledge of maya, right? And this is what Buddhism teaches, right? You want to get past this illusion and understand that the only time that exists is now. Because in the now, this is where you can see all these frequencies. If you're solid in yourself and you go out into the real world, you'll see people frantic, scared, in their own illusion, right? You'll notice somebody who is also awake. But if you just sit back, step back, and be here right now, you'll notice all around you people living in their own illusions. Have conversations with them. There's some people who don't even want to hear what you have to say. They just want to tell you everything that's going on in their world, right? Then you got people that don't really say much, but they do encourage you, right? They do listen to what you have to say and, you know, say good job or whatever. Everybody's in their own world because that person I just talked about, the one who doesn't say much, I'm sure they've got a million things going on in their world. They just didn't think it was pertinent to tell you. And the first person who keeps going on and on about everything, we all know those types of people. But what is... This have to do with time and your magical results. So, what I've been seeing recently is that we are all vibration. We're all data. We're all, what's the word? We're all libraries of information, right? You and all of your experiences that you remember and don't remember are an accumulated piece of data. And when you die, that's going to be added to the Akashic Records. The same with me. The same with anybody else. We're all little libraries walking around full of information. Now, a finite mind like ours can't possibly have the time or need to access a library of a person. But an infinite mind, the all, right? doesn't exist in time. The data is all there at once. So each one of these demons ha are specialized in a certain thing. That's because they are a library of information. And when you access them, you access their information. This is why they don't feel a certain way. They're not mad at you. They're not your best friend. They're just a library of information. The exact same thing goes for the angels, especially the angels, because they hold a higher dominion than the demons. You can get stuff done with demonic spirits, of course, and it usually happens fast, and it usually fizzles out fast. But see, an angelic spirit holds a much, much, much higher position. So sometimes their effects can be slow, but that's because it's integrating and building itself into your life so that it will last for a long time. This is why you don't just approach angels for no reason. You approach them knowing exactly what you want and considering the fact that it that you're going to get what you want and it's going to stay there. For people with for people that are still impulsive and they want it now, microwave generation, I recommend you work with demonic spirits until you're not satisfied anymore. Because hopefully by that time, you'll be matured enough to know that you want to build for the future. And once you reach that stage, that's probably the best time for you to go ahead and start working with the angelic spirits. Um, but to get back to what I was saying, each one of us are a library of information. Everything in existence. That frequency, that vibration is the library of information. There's a frequency for red. Everything that is red or comprises of red 
exists on that frequency, etc. ad infinitum. So the thing is, as we exist in this reality, we are trapped and locked into time. Now what does that mean? Science tells us that time is what we use to gauge change in direction or temperature or movement. It's what we use to measure change. In time, we age. We get sick, we get healthy. The day, the night flows. Time is where change occurs. But if you look at the big picture, you'll notice that the entire planet, the entire ecosystem, is evolving through time. This is changing and shifting and that is changing and people and ideas and the society that we live in, the tools that we use, the computers and everything, everything is moving forward and accelerating and changing. Nothing is an accident, right? Everything happens the way it's supposed to happen to lead to a particular destination. And that's something that you have to believe also when you're doing these rituals. Because if you don't believe that everything is guided to a specific purpose, What's the point of your magic? Because if you don't believe that there's a particular destination, now you make room for that fear that, oh, I might fuck something up. Oh, if I use this magic, what if I do it wrong? What if I cause this to happen? You can't get very far with that mindset. So even as the ancients believed and understood, we are flowing on a current. So everything that happens, happens the way that it's supposed to. There's an in and an out. The world operates that way, right? Listen, there's four seasons, and the world always goes from winter to spring to summer to fall. Every time, day and night, every time. The same hours tick past every time, all right? There's change, but it's concentrated and focused. So the main thing is, when you step outside of time, you can see that it just exists. Reality just exists. Regardless if you do anything or not, reality exists. The angelic and demonic spirits that you work with exist outside of time. We exist inside of time. So for us, everything is changing, especially our emotions especially our thoughts and our ideas. The spirits that we deal with are not going through that change. They are the information that they are. That's it. Keep these concepts in your mind when you're working your ritual. You're not dealing with a spirit that may be angry with you or may be your best friend. Neither. It's like reading a book or surfing the internet. It just exists. And you can sift through it because you have been granted the ability to exist in time but once you move beyond time it's all there it's just there you're a part of it now you're a part of the all you're not moving you're not going anywhere you just exist as all information and all knowledge so with all that being said my suggestion and my tip if you're not having any type of results with your magic is to create an atmosphere for yourself where you can detach from time. A lot of people are saying that they have trouble getting into the trance, or they can't reach the theta gamma sync, or they can't meditate, or this or that. That's probably a big thing that's stopping you, because you've got to still your mind and separate it from time so that you can interact with the beings who live outside of time. What I used to do about 10 years ago is, um, when I was in the military at the time, I used to go back to my room and I'd cut the lights out, cut the uh, heat off and keep it cold. And, um, you know, I'd play my music or do whatever, but I kept it to where it would look the same no matter what time of day it was. All I had was my alarm clock to tell me that it was time to go. But for all those hours, it existed as the same timeless area, right? I didn't see the sun come up or go down. I didn't care or know what time it was. But in that zone, I was able to come up with many wonderful things. At the time, I was producing a lot of music, so the songs just kept coming, just kept coming, just kept coming, because I wasn't worried about what time it was. And it seemed to last forever, but go by so quickly, right? This is the place you want to be. 
You want to be in the place where time doesn't matter and you're free to move through whatever the information or emotion or experience that you're feeling. My suggestion is try to create an area like that for yourself, you know, once a day. Maybe right before you go to bed. What I do now is, um, you know, I have little Christmas lights in my room. So it's not a bright light, but it's also not really dim, right? I have a lot of LED stuff. So if I'm off and I go into my room, it's the same time forever. And I find that's better for me to do my study and to do my ritual because I don't feel rushed. I don't feel, you know, the effects of seeing the sun go up or go down. That's just what I do. But if you can find something for yourself where you can detach yourself from time, that's what meditation is so good for. Because you detach from time and you just exist in the now. And when you come back, you're so revitalized, so refreshed, and so cleared of mind. Be creative. Find something. Create that inner space for yourself. And it doesn't have to be for hours. Just do it repetitively. Because what you're doing is you're creating a space in your subconscious mind that, you know, where you're letting your subconscious mind know we're in the timeless area. And this might help you get into the receptive state a lot easier because you're relaxed, right? The less things that you're attached to in life, the easier you can focus and go within. So, this has been a good talk. This is TK Trav. AKA Travis Mages here with LVX 777. Peace.